Hello, good morning, happy Saturday. Welcome to Romero Threads on YouTube, where it's all about embroidery. Happy Saturday, it's always good to be uh, coming in, starting this morning, of course, uh, starting our Saturday morning with some uh, training, some educational stuff, and some information that we could all learn, because I already know that we have uh, a lot of seasoned embroiders here uh, every weekend on our class and everybody's sharing uh, information that everybody has. So, okay, my audio sounds good here. So let me put this away. Sounds like we're good. All right, uh, all right, good morning. Let me post a little message on the chat. Uh, good morning. Let me know, let me know where you are watching from. All right. Uh, good morning to everybody, to my uh, West Coast, Midwest, East Coast. And of course, we always get our uh, handful of international viewers. Okay. So it's always good to kind of uh, share information uh, before, right? A couple of years ago, everything used to be locally. You had to travel a lot. And now all this information is kind of worldwide. And as you can see, we all benefit from that uh, information. So very good. Uh, today's, uh, the plan for today. So today's week is how to digitize a logo three different ways. So I got, um, I got this one, right? The world famous North Carolina. All right. Uh, I'm a big North Carolina fan and of course, uh, North Carolina, we're playing Duke today for the Final Four. So, of course, what better way to start today's morning than to kind of go over this uh, this kind of worldwide logo, worldwide known logo. And the good thing about this one is it's it's different than most logos. All right. So a lot of moving pieces in this logo. OK, it looks pretty straightforward. All right. But of course, as embroiders. All right, we could always overcomplicate stuff. Uh, well, we can make something look nicer, but we got to know what we're doing when we're making something look nicer. All right, so um, that's that's the plan for today. But we're gonna we're gonna digitize. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna digitize. We're going to hoop, and we're going to embroider what we just digitized. Okay, because I know for me, in order for me to learn, I need to see from beginning all the way to the end, okay? So it's one thing to kind of go into the theory of digitizing, but when you see it, you know, when you see the final product, okay, when you actually see the final product in hand, that's where your learning kind of goes full circle, okay? That's where the real, real, real learning happens is when we actually digitize, we practice, we go over uh, different options that we have and we actually stitch it out, okay? Because in theory, you could do the world's best. You could do the world's best digitizing, have your the world's best uh, sti uh, digitized file, but you don't know that until you actually embroidered it. Okay, so that's the plan for today. Um, so let's go ahead. I want to dive quick into the digitizing because I already know this is gonna time. Time always goes by every Saturday morning. Like as soon as I watch my 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 time, like two hours has came up. All right. So I want to make sure we kind of get into all the digitizing part. So I want to digitize three logos. I want to digitize the logo three different ways. Okay. The way I categorize them, I categorize them as the first way we're going to do it is the real uh, quick and easy way. Okay. I would say uh, a good percentage of digitizers usually do it the quick and easy way. OK, sometimes you don't have time to kind of get into the details and you just need to do something very quick and simple. All right. So we're going to do the quick and simple way first and then we're going to kind of uh, add some dimensions to it. And then we're going to kind of get into the more um, the more uh, detailed type. All right. So the third one would be the more detailed one. All right. So we'll start with easy mid range and then a little bit more detailed ish. All right. All right. Good morning, everybody. Let me see. We got. We got a jam-packed house. Good morning, Jesse. Good good morning, Janet. Uh, Barb, good morning. Uh, Crafty Puerto Rican, good morning, Beverly, Marissa. 
All right, we got a jam-packed house. All right. Uh, one thing, if you have a question today, put a Q next to it, and I'm going to uh, I'll flag the question just so when we start the embroidery part, I could go back while we're waiting and looking at it stitch. We can go over all these questions. All right. So uh, just uh, leave all your questions there. All right. All right. So let's go ahead and let's start with this logo. Let me see. Uh, all right. So this is the logo that we're going to do. We're going to do it three ways. All right. So the first way, which is the easy way, uh, let me kind of show you. All right. So I want to show you on paper kind of like what's running through my mind. OK, uh, this one's just going to be a flat tatami flat. OK, tatami flat stitch uh, with a border around it. OK, but let's go to the drawing board. Let's go to the drawing board and kind of show you the game plan when I go over this digitizing part right now. All right. So this here is just a. Uh, it's just an outline all right of our design let me see yeah looks like we're good here all right focus looks good yep all right um so right now we're gonna make our piece we're gonna all make this one piece okay so all we're going to do is trace okay we're gonna trace the border and make it one piece to tommy stitch with one angle Okay, so the whole piece here is going to all follow the same angle. Okay, I'll try to follow this line going across. Okay, so, you know, you got to make a judgment cons and kind of figure out which angle best fits for you. Okay, but I would say this kind of this, this part, okay, that would be our angle of our tatami stitch, our flat stitch. All right, um, when I trace it, you're going to see when I trace real quick, these corners is what I call pivot pivot points. That just means we're going from one side. So for example, here, I'm going straight in and then I'm gonna make a left right away, okay? These are curves, okay? So curves, you'll see them represented as circles when I'm digitizing. And I think uh, most digitizing software, okay, do use circles. And then you'll see when I have these uh, pivots here, you'll see boxes. OK, so when you see boxes, that means you're getting a sharp turn. All right. So here you'll see curves. All right. So I'm going to kind of uh, when I'm digitizing, I'm going to try to kind of do it pretty quick. Uh, all right. So I'm going to I'm going to stitch this out. And then as you can see, we have holes. These are holes. In our designs, so we'll take care of the holes, different ways to take care of holes. All right. So I'll show you uh, two different ways to make the holes and then. Um, we have our border outlines out here, our satin border. All right, so this one's pretty straightforward. Okay, so there's not too much information to go over with here. All right, so I'll go into the digitizing part. All right. Uh, let me see. Uh, all right, we have our logo here. Okay, looks like we're good. All right, so I'm going, of course, every time we start, you wanna go ahead and measure your design. So I have this design measured for about three inches or should or actually 2.5, but mm, let me see. I wanna start at a 2.5. So as you can see, if I select the whole drawing, it selects open parts here. So I can't really use this as a guide. But I could box it up. I could just make a box and box it up and then check the size on that. All right, so you could just kind of adjust it just so you could get the correct size. All right, right. All right, this would be, so down here below my bottom right, uh, with 2.8, I want a 2.5. All right, so I would just make the box as a 2.5. Now I could select my artwork and make it a little smaller so it matches that. All right, so a little bigger. All right, so there you go. See, matches the sides. 
Bam, bam. So it should be 2.5 inches now. All right. And I could, this box that I just created, I could just delete it. All right. Now I'm going to lock this. Okay. Lock it just so it doesn't move. And we're ready to start tracing. So a lot, a lot of, a lot of part, the, the big part about digitizing, okay, is, um, is the tracing part. Okay. Tracing is probably a good percentage, probably like good 60, 70, maybe even 80% of digitizing is just being able to, uh, is just being able to trace files. All right. Okay. Let me, let me answer this question because this is a good question here. All right. Good morning, Lejean. Will you offer this file to download for practice later? Uh, yes, I'll, 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 I'll post up the three files that we're digitizing. I'll post it up so you could kind of uh, dissect it and kind of analyze, overanalyze the the settings and all that stuff, uh, and then see if you could uh, if you could stitch it out as a practice run. Okay, and then just to let everybody know that we're using this logo for educational purposes. Okay, don't go ahead and uh, of course, right? We already know the rules of embroidery is. Don't don't get a logo and try to stay and try to make money, right? Try to create items and start selling stuff. All right. Of course, those are just basic information. All right. But for educational purpose, especially this logo, since we have um, we have items potentially crisscrossing itself, okay, which you'll see when we get into the satin portion. Okay. Uh, so I'll put this file up for free. It might just be up for free for uh for like a week or two, and then I'll just take it down. Just for future, uh, future times. All right, all right. Good question, right there. All right, uh, all right. Let's continue. So, let's see. What was I saying? Okay, so we got the sizing ready. We're good. And just as a side note, uh, even if even if you send out your digitizing, right? Even if you send out your digitizing, let me kind of go. Uh, let me pull myself up just for this quick one right here. All right. Even if you do your, even if you send out your digitizing, because there's times we even send out our, our digitizing, right? Sometimes you get booked and you don't have time to kind of sit down and go over the digitizing parts. Okay. Even if, if you send it out, it's still good practice to understand the basics of digitizing because sometimes uh, when you move from garment to garment, sometimes your, your design requires a little slight adjustment. Okay. And instead of waiting a day or two, or maybe you're working late night in the middle of the night and you don't have access to your digitizer. Okay, uh, maybe it's not possible to, uh, you know, you, you might wanna get that that adjustment done on the spot, all right? But if you understand the, the how digitizing works and the theory and everything that comes behind it, okay, it's it's a little easier to, to move forward and kind of push your projects a little bit quicker, all right? And if something isn't coming out right, Okay, you know who to blame. Okay, sometimes, a lot of times, when you're brand new, something's not working out, and you don't know who to blame because you don't know where the problem exists. Okay, but if you understand kind of like the, the, the theory and all the fundamentals, okay, you know where to pinpoint your issue. All right, all right. So let's go ahead. Let's continue. All right, we're gonna do a trace right now. Okay, so when I trace it, I'm just gonna, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to use the most basic tools okay even though i have wilcom a lot of these tools that 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 i use here are used in the most traditional uh softwares out there all right so right now all i'm going to do is trace okay trace this line out here all right i'll start here in this corner all right and then every time we do a curve right i'm just putting a curve here all right I'm trying to get it as close as possible if it doesn't come out super perfect, then uh, I'll just come back afterwards. Okay, so here you could see, like if I put a straight line, it has like a little bit of curve on it. So I'm just gonna add that curve there. Okay, and then here, this looks like a straight line, right? So you're just putting straight lines, curves, right? And then you wanna use the most minimum clicks or nodes as possible. And that just that just helps you in the if you have to adjust anything, okay? It, it helps you with uh, the adjusting portion. When something doesn't come out right, 
Okay, you don't have like hundreds of nodes that you have to uh, deal with. All right, and then bam. Little slight curve right here. All right, so you want to get it as possible here. Looks like straight line. Okay. And then corners, I'm just going straight line. Then here has slight curve, so I add this little mini curve here. Here, straight line. Okay, curve here. Pivot, straight, straight. Ah, oh, that's a little mini one. And then once you get to the last one, I could just push enter, then enter. All right, now let's see how this looks. All right, so H, okay, so this is the one, this is that one angle that I was talking about. All right, um, a lot of these settings, you could do it till afterwards. So like the start and stop. Uh, here's my start. I just put it back here. All right. So what we have right now is a full fill. Okay. So of course, right, we need to make the holes that are inside here. Uh, two ways to do it. Two ways to do it. Uh, the most basic way, most most uh, software has this uh, feature, which is a add holes. Okay. So all you're going to do is add these holes here. And... You could remove this one here, remove these little dots. And same thing with this uh, tool here, the digitized closed shapes. Okay, so right now I'm doing this part, the inside part. Okay, so that was a uh, turn. I, I usually like to start on the, on the corners. All right, but it really doesn't matter where you start. And here has a slight curve, so we'll put a curve here. And then close it up. Enter point one on the curve. Okay, hold on. Let me rewind that one. Actually, it created a new one. I was trying to do uh, the window, but let's, okay, let's start again. Start here, add holes. Okay, I know what I, I was doing the second, the second example. All right, so same thing. Just kind of trace it real quick. And then here at this pivot, curve, enter. And then it says, we could add the other hole. Okay, so I'll add this hole here just to make two real quick. All right, as a little curve, put that curve there. Then a pivot, little curve here, pivot. And then this looks like a straight line sock. All right, so real quick, I made these two holes right now. All right, we got these two holes coming in right here. I left this this third hole oh, uh, closed just because I want to show you a different way to do it. All right. All right. Uh, good morning, everybody. Looks like we have jam-packed house. This is a this is going to be a very informational digitizing session. We're going to go from very basic, easy one. So right now, I'm digitizing the most basic way you can do it all right if you need a if you need a if you need to knock out a design quick and easy okay this would probably be the most uh quickest easiest but at the same time it's gonna look pretty nice all right all right uh so we got our two holes here let's go ahead and make this third one so there's a different way to make a hole okay uh this could be beneficial uh if you have this feature here so what i'm gonna do i'm just gonna create a new a new object up here on top of our, all right, as you can see, I started here. So close to the light blue, the baby blue. Um, this is a straight line. Okay, this is a curve. All right. All right, so what I did was create a object on top of my green one, okay? And what I'm going to do is select both. And then if your software has this, uh, Feature is pretty cool, right? It's the um, uh, this one divide. All right, and then you delete this black one. All right, and then it creates that hole for you. Okay, so what it did, it it combined the both objects, 
and it, it remove the overlaps. Okay, but this is the cool thing about this one. All right, this is where it might be useful. Okay, notice that it added. Okay, it adds overlap. All right, so this is pretty good. Like if you're combining objects and you need additional overlap, it'll add that overlap for you. Okay, so notice how when I when I created that object, I, I started up here, okay? But with that overlap, it'll give you an additional, okay? It'll give you additional uh, overlap, all right? Just so when uh, when you combine items, the, the gaps don't show, all right? But that's uh, option number two, all right, if needed. But what I'm going to do, I'm not gonna do it that way. Just want to keep everything consistent. So I'm going to add a hole again just to make this third piece right here. All right. All right. So real quick, bam, bam. This here is a straight line and then curve. All right. All right. Now we have our logo with our required um, holes in them. Okay. Uh, and then what you want to do, okay? Now to create this border, all right? So as you see, we have the dark blue border around the Carolina blue, all right? So now it's time to create this border, all right? Since what you want to do right now is just make sure, double check. So you push the, you check with your uh, reshape, okay? Just make sure all your nodes are looking good. Everything is traced out good, okay? Because what we're going to do, we're going to create the border and as long as this is uh, traced pretty good, okay, you should have a very clean border. So notice how I have as minimum nodes as possible, okay? I have the most minimum nodes, all right? And then bam, okay, so we look good. So what I'm gonna do, all right, I'm going to create a offset, okay? I'm gonna, not an offset, but an outline, okay? So get familiar with your with your outline features on your software because it's very very convenient. All right, very convenient. All right. Uh, just a reminder: if you have a question, just leave a queue. I'm kind of like I'm not on the I'm I'm not looking at the questions right now, but I am gonna go back and go into the chat once we start uh once we start uh embroidering. Okay. So right now I'm kind of zoned in in here on the wheel call all right so right now okay i don't want no offset so if you have an offset you're going to take this off okay and let's see you can't see it because it's the same color but let me do it black all right so i created my outlines okay my outlines is pretty much going the same form as what I just outlined, all right? And it did the, the outside and the inside, okay? Now it's time to double check our outlines because sometimes as you, anytime you do something automatically, so for example, right now when we created this offset, it was done automatically, right? Because we pushed some buttons and it, and it created the outline. So anytime it does that, you want to double check that it didn't uh, include any unnecessary um, any unnecessary nodes so here these are nodes here so you just want to double check sometimes they'll put like a double like a double square here and it'll affect the next the next step that we're going to do all right so just make sure there's no unnecessary nodes everything looks good here okay this is just quick checks because it'll save you time in the long run all right and then we go here so all of our nodes we don't have any unnecessary nodes Okay, so now, okay, we are ready to make these sand stitches. Okay, so what I'm going to do, right now they're just a run stitch, right? They're just a straight line, nothing special happening. But what I wanna do, I wanna turn them into a sand stitch, all right? So we got a sand stitch here. Now let's just adjust the correct sizing, all right? so. Uh, right now, three millimeters, so we do not want it three millimeters. We just want two millimeters, uh, very subtle, okay? So as you can see, 
me see. As you can see, this border here, very subtle, okay? Very simple, easy, okay? So we wanna keep it very simple and easy. Here, this is measuring at, in reality, it's measuring pretty small, 1.15, okay? Uh, you don't wanna go that small because it's gonna get lost in our fabric, okay? So you can actually, I'm gonna extend it a little bit out to like here, right? To like two millimeters. Still pretty thin, all right? Especially for a border, it's pretty thin for a border, but still good enough, all right? But you, you sometimes you gotta get out, you gotta get out of the, what's re, what's what you're seeing on screen, because if we keep it like this, our border might kind of, um, our border might kind of get lost in the mix. All right. All right. Uh, let's see. Bam. All right. Now let's bring back everything. All right. Uh, I know I'm moving pretty fast right now. Okay. I'm moving a little fast on some stuff. I'm going to go back. And when I replay stuff, I'm going to kind of do a slow motion and tell, tell you guys uh, what I'm talking about. Right. Also, a lot of the a lot of the, the the steps that I'm hold on, let me show. Let me kind of get in here. All right. Also, uh, a lot of the the tools that I'm using here, I have that prerequisite video that I have when we started the channel. I have that prerequisite. If you if you always want to go back and kind of see what I'm talking about in details, okay. Uh, I go into the definitions of uh, a lot of the software features. All right. So you can always go back. Go into the the one that's called um, the prerequisite for the embroidery class. All right. All right. Just as an FYI. All right. Just in case if I'm moving fast. All right. The reason why I'm moving fast because, uh, trust me, two hours it goes by like so quick. It's like in a blink of an eye. It's two hours. All right. Uh, let's see. Bam bam. All right. Now, what I want to do. Okay. I just want to kind of, um, let me see, uh, make these corners look a little bit more uh, nicer. Okay. You could keep them like that, but I'm just going to, uh, let's see, go here. I got a feature here where it kind of takes care of the corners a bit. Um, let's see. And then cap corners. Let me see what I have my corners at. Inner caps, outer caps, below. Outer side, outer. All right. Let me see. Let me see if this. Will... All right. Bam. So I'm just cap my corner. This is what capping a corner is. All right. So notice it kind of made make made it look a little nicer. Okay, bam, 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 compared to how it was right here. So I'm gonna remove cap corner. This is how it looks without capping corner. All right, just looks a little plain. And then it extends out that, that sharp corner one, right? So it just makes it a little look a little nicer. All right, so here we have the most basic, okay, most basic digitizing you can do, all right? So when we're talking about when we're talking about basic digitizing and you want something quick and easy, hold on, push this. All right, if you want something kind of quick and easy, all right, you you do it this way, all right? This is the quick and easy way, all right? Uh, we have some questions. Let me go back and kind of, because we might go into a different topic and then I'll lose this quest, these questions here. All right, good morning. All right, we got a lot of good mornings here. Uh, and then we got good morning janet where can i get parts from for my recoma uh i would say the best thing to do is call recoma and they probably could uh uh suggest places to go maybe they they have parts uh, that would be a good starting point uh the only thing i've had i have i've hadn't had to buy parts for my equipment but I've had them ship, uh, like when uh, when my uh, uh, control board or a part of the motherboard kind of uh, fried up. 
Okay, they sent out the, they sent me a new one. I didn't have to buy it. All right. Um, all right, a lot of good mornings. All right, good morning, Eddie. Good morning, Janet, LaJean, Linda. Making new dreams come true from California. Yep. All right. Uh, Sunrise Tactical Gear. Good morning from Washington State. All right. West Coast. All right. Good morning, Jeanette. All right. Good morning, everyone. All right. Good morning, T Town. All right. Uh, we're going to come with some parts. You can send an email. Yep. Craft to Puerto Rican, right? Right here. Bam. You can send an email to service and you can also visit my Recoma website. Yep. All right. Thank you for that uh, answer. All right. Bam, bam. All right. Uh, let's see. We got uh, Allison. I'm having a hard time with the holes, understanding them. Okay. All right. I, I know I kind of did it pretty simple. I mean, I did it pretty quick right there, but all I did was select create holes and then I created a hole like I didn't really have to do anything else all right uh bam bam we got uh AC designs good morning to everybody all right good question here Sharon is there a DVD to help teach step by step uh not that I know of I haven't even seen a DVD like in at least 10 years so um I would say um like one like one video to kind of show everything uh you would kind of have to do it in steps all right and and then uh i would say right the the uh, the this saturday morning training class probably if you started from the beginning okay probably gives you a good uh a good stepping stone on how to start from digitizing because i try to start from the beginning all right bam bam uh all right Bevy Jean. So when you started the holes, did you hit insert holes, then draw ball? Yeah, 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 yeah. I clicked on insert her. I'll, I'll do a replay again. All right. I'll do a replay on that, how I did it. All right. Good morning, Rob. All right. I know it's good morning. Morning, morning. All right. All right. All right. Appreciate that, Barb. Yeah, hit that like. Let, uh, let YouTube know that we are in the house. Okay, we are uh, up this morning, learning all about embroidery. All right, let's get back into here. Uh, let me show you something of the holes. All right, because holes. Let me do this hole again. Let's do a basic shape. All right, so we have a square and. We want to put a circle in here, right? So let's say we want to do a circle. What we're going to do, we're going to select our box. So we have our black box selected and we're going to here. So I'm clicking on the left where it says add holes. Okay. And it, and then you can see, you can read a description. It says cut holes and fill objects. All right, I'm going to click that. Okay, I'm going to click that. Now, if you read down, on my bottom left, uh, the software is talking to me. Okay, I think you could see it. Let me see. Yeah, you could see it. It's saying enter point one of the hole. Okay, so it's telling me, hey, put that hole. So now, let's say I want to put it, make a uh, triangle. Okay, connected it, and now when I push enter, it should delete that hole. All right, so it just deleted that hole. So that's how you go about creating holes. All right, so let me know if there was any questions on that. All right. All right, so we have this one ready to go. Okay, uh, let's do a quick replay. This is the most basic way. Actually, actually, I'm forgetting one very important item. All right, very important item. What I like to do, so I'm going to use just a regular uh, running stitch. Okay, what I like to do, I'm going to put a uh, global underlay, okay? So what I'm doing here, I'm, I'm, I'm setting up my first stitch, okay? My first stitch, I kind of want to, to kind of uh, flatten out, flatten out this design 
on my fabric. Okay, that way it, it, it serves multiple uh, purposes. All right, one purpose is to flatten out my design, avoids puckering. Okay, it avoids puckering because it's gonna make this whole ob it's gonna make this whole design into one piece. Okay, right away. Uh, another useful purpose is that another useful purpose is that it uh, attaches the the cutaway. Okay, let me hide this. It it attaches the the cutaway with your fabric. All right, that way there's no loss of registration. Your fabric's not kind of slipping. Everything's all in one piece. Okay, so when we start uh, uh, when we start stitching, okay, everything is all held together in one piece. If that what if that makes sense, all right. So this is called a uh, a um, a global underlay. Okay, of course we have underlay for each of our individual uh, objects. Okay, but as an overall, this stitch here is gonna just make everything kind of flat. Okay, all together. All right, so. I'm going to make this the same color as my green and the black. All right. And then let's go over uh, settings. All right. Settings is always important. Unhide all. All right. Um, so I said really digitizing. Okay. Really, uh, really digitizing. Uh, a good part about it, a good, I would say 60, 70, maybe even 80% of digitizing is just tracing, right? The tracing portion, how to trace it, how to break it up. But the next part, okay, the next part, this part that we're going to do right now, this is the make or break portion, all right? This is like the 30%, the 20%. This is the little details where now experience uh, a little bit of just um, technicality, or not a little bit, but a lot of technicality now comes in. All right, now these are your settings, okay? What are we going to use as underlay? What is our density, okay? Little small details that we kind of don't think about. Now we got to set these settings in. All right, so let's go into that. All right, so we'll start here. Uh, this one, we really don't need any settings. It's just a runny stitch. And then my, my inside, so my green part, we definitely need settings there, okay? Uh, really, the, the software settings are usually good. So these are the software settings, 0.4 and 4. You'll see this a lot of times, very popular for a tatami. Uh, this is tatami stitch, uh, fill stitch, okay? That's what it means to be a tatami stitch. Uh, but the underlay, let's talk about underlay. Tatami, I like to do tatami with a 90 degree angle, okay? Let me turn this guy off. Uh, tatami with a 90 degree angle is usually uh, the normal. All right, okay, so that's pretty good. And then of course our angle is an important thing. So this bar here, you can see my angle here. So I'm kind of trying to follow this line here. This is, I would say this is my dominant part of the logo here. Okay, so you just gotta figure out why you wanna do a certain angle, okay? Um, let's see, what other? And then uh, here on my outside stitch, okay? As you can see, underlay, I definitely don't want a tatami. Uh, center run is fine. You can put a zigzag too. All right, actually everything. Center run. Um, zigzag. Okay, so that's really all the settings. All right, not too much. Uh, and then let's check our replay here. Put replay. So this is my uh, global underlay. Okay, it's going down. It's just connecting fabric to our backing. Okay, and It'll avoid any um, unnecessary slip, okay? Uh, and then here, we actually start our, uh, 
we start the actual fill stitch. All right, so let me speed it up. So that's this is what it means to be 90 degrees. It does it. It does it at an angle, and now it's gonna do it perpendicular. Whatever whatever angle I set my main fill stitch, the the underlay is gonna run perpendicular. All right. Now it's gonna go here. Okay. And it's gonna do that part. All right. Let me double check this. Uh, Underlay, center run, zigzag. All right. Okay, there was one more thing I was gonna check. Uh. All right. So. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. One more thing. Uh. Of course. I'm all about making our designs as efficient as possible. Okay. This is a big important item here. Is trims. How many cuts? Uh, of course, we don't want unnecessary cuts. Okay. Uh, the borders, really, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave those to cut. So one, two, three, four. We should have four cuts. But here, here on my green, so it's labeled green. I want this. You could just put apply closest join. Huh? I didn't do it. Hold on. T. H. So I start stop here. So on this H, I want to start up here. And then I could just remove that cut. Okay. It should have removed that cut, but it didn't. So I'm just going to manually remove it. Connectors off. Trim after. Nope. I want it before right here. Off. Okay. Now. Now I'm at five trims, okay? Right now, it, it doesn't play a big, like it's not very noticeable because we don't have that many cuts, but let's say if you get a if you get a file and you have like 35 cuts, which I've had, I've, I've received files where it was something basic and there was 35 cuts. Of course, that's not production friendly, all right? That's gonna take you forever to do a very simple project. So those are some items you wanna, you always want to look at when you receive a file when you receive a, a file from a digitizer you always want to go to the design information okay let me tell you some information you want to look for okay trims you always want to know uh trim sometimes there's no way out of it you have to make a trim if that's the case all right uh take that trim but sometimes it's not necessary so if it's not necessary you might be able to uh, remove certain trims all right uh, another thing so you go into stitching. You want to look at maximum stitch. Okay, so here I have a maximum. For some reason, I have a nine millimeter uh, maximum stitch. All right, it's probably like a jump stitch somewhere. All right, uh, but that's fine. It, it could still handle nine millimeters. All right, but if 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 you're receiving uh, something that's unnecessary, you could kind of uh, find out where that maximum stitch is at. Okay, but yeah, you always want to know maximum stitch and minimum stitch. Okay, minimum stitch 0.1. Okay, that's probably like a, a turn on the tatami stitch. All right, so this way, very basic, easy way to do it. All right, uh, if you want to do something quick and quick and easy, this is the way to do it. And uh, let me see. I think we're doing all right with the questions. Oh, uh, bam, bam. All right, let's go to number two, how to do it here, right? Let's say we want to add a little bit more details to this one here, to a flat stitch, right? Um, let me show you. Let's select this. Let's delete this, okay? Mm. Actually, do a new design. Unlock this, unlock. Let's copy and let's paste. All right, so I'm gonna make a new one here. Lock this up, 
Okay. All right, so our size right now, we're at a 2.5 um, unlock. All right, just as a reminder. The size that we're working with, okay, uh, 2.5 width. Yeah, 2.5, okay. Uh, let's say we wanted to do a sand stitch right now, right? We're not going to do a sand stitch yet, but just in case, okay? Let's say uh, you wanted to know, can I do a sand stitch at this size right here, right? This is the way you figure out if you can do a sand stitch. Um, at this size, all right. You want to make sure uh, your your stitches are short enough to be to be a uh, sand stitch. Okay. So usually you don't want to be above uh, nine, maybe seven millimeters. Okay. So a good way to check. You could create a circle. Okay. All right. This is just to figure out. Uh, let's go into millimeters. You select this circle, okay? You select the circle, and then you you put the width as a seven millimeter. Okay, so now my circle is at seven millimeters. Okay, so from from any side that we're talking about, that's seven millimeters. Okay, so as you can see, it's a, the design's a little bit too big. Okay. If we were to go, if we did want to use this design to do a sand stitch, okay, just kind of increase this a little bigger. All right, let's see. Okay, we're looking at 8.62. So your sand stitches would be 8.62. Okay, is it possible? Yes, okay, but you're going to have some pretty long stitches. All right, I wouldn't do it right now. Uh, maybe a puff might look pretty good uh, at this. Right here, you're a little bigger too. Okay, as you see, you might have to go up to 10 millimeters here. See? All right, yeah, we're like at 9.88. Okay, so you might be a little bit too big to, uh, this design might be too big for, uh, for sand stitches, all right? So that's just kind of like a quick way to check to see if, if your design is good for uh, sand stitches, all right? So usually the sweet spot is anywhere from seven to nine millimeters. All right, let me delete that. Um, so what I wanna do, okay, so let me pull myself up when we go number two. This is way number two. The second way to uh, to digitize a logo, okay, uh, is um, let's make some let's put some dimensions into it. All right, let's break this piece up into pieces. All right, instead of it being only one piece, instead of it only being one piece, let's break it up into pieces and uh give it some dimensions all right so we're gonna go uh we're still gonna do a uh a uh fill stitch just because we're still too big for a sand stitch all right so real quick i'm gonna show you how we could break it up and we could turn it into a uh a more uh more detailed a more detailed look and it might give it a more perceived value uh look also All right, let's go into here. So I'm going to break this up. And the way I'm going to do it, I'm going to start with the end first. I'm going to create the end first. And then I'm going to create the C right after. OK, so I'm going to break it up into pieces. And let me see if I can do this as quick as possible. All right, I'm going to use column A just real quick, just to use some other stuff, um, just to column stitch. Uh, yeah, bam, bam. All right, uh, I'm gonna try to do it quick. 
and then I'll go back and replay. All right. So I'm just breaking up the logo into pieces. I have an unnecessary curve there, but that's fine. I'll change it right now. You could always go back, H, select it, and then put a square. Okay. All right, so I created this part. Okay, this uh, I'm starting it from reverse. Okay, so I'm going kind of backwards. So I want this leg to be on top. I always design what's going to be on top uh, first. Well, not I'm not going to say I always, but in situations like this, I like to digitize what's on top first just because everything kind of revolves around that piece that goes first. All right, so right now I got this leg, okay? I got the leg of the end, okay? So it's just going this part. You could change this angle a bit. All right, bam. All right, we got this part and I'm just gonna break up this end into two pieces, okay? I'm gonna just use the complex one here. Um, so let me just create this one. This one's a little different. This, this tool is a little different here. This is all a straight line. Well, let me see. Straight. Should be a straight line. Straight. Okay. Here, here, uh, this part that I'm digitizing right now is going to go under the first one I just did. So I could just kind of go put a little overlap here. All right, and then that's going straight in. Entry point, and then it's going to have me do the angles. This angle, I want it to just look as natural as possible. Okay, so I want this to be right here. And this bottom one to finish off here. Bam, bam. And uh, here, I want my uh, I want the two overlaps to kind of fall in within the same uh, angle. Okay, so if that's the case, we select it H, bring this up a bit. Okay, of course this is going to get tucked up under. All right. So if we're looking at it, all right, it's like a better view. All right, so as you see, now I'm giving it some dimensions to it. Okay, I'm giving some dimensions here. All right, now let me do the other part of the end. And start up here on the top. All right, so let me kind of go quick here. Bam. A lot of this is just tracing, right? And then with the tracing, the more practice you get, just like with everything else, okay, the better. All right, just curves. And curve. Okay, entry point angle. We're gonna add our angles here. this angle to be here and we want it you kind of want to anticipate how these angles are going to look all right of course this gets tucked in all right so so far this is what we're looking all right this is what's on the top part of the logo all right so now we're giving it a little bit dimensions all right so instead of everything being flat um Instead of something looking uh, very flat, uh, now we're giving it a little bit more, uh, a little bit more dimensions, all right? Especially, uh, it, it it seems kind of subtle, right? But when when of course when the light hits it, and people see it, it kind of stands out a little bit more than the one that we just did, okay? And then let's go ahead. Let's do this C part. 
Okay, so the C, I'm gonna run it uh, from up here. And let me just let me just talk about the most important thing here. What you want, since we have two objects combining together, okay. Let me just show you right here. All right. You could see it here in the details, all right? So as you can see it here, just notice, right? We have this part, this part of the N coming in. We want, in a perfect world, those stitches are gonna come in perfectly and they're like gonna hug each other, right? They're gonna like come through, hug each other, and then kind of stay locked in. That way it prevents gaps, right? Now, that's in a perfect world, right? There's gonna be certain parts in this uh, in this file where stitches are coming in perpendicular, okay? When stitches come in perpendicular, okay, whoever's coming on this side, he's gonna start pulling, and then you start seeing these gaps, okay? So you wanna avoid this, right? Pulling in, perfect world, and then sometimes you have no other no other choice but to have objects combining together like that. And then we'll kind of see what we do in situations like that. All right. All right. Uh, let me see. Um, Rob Jones, I'm just seeing this question right here, but this is always a very popular question. Can anyone recommend a good digitizer I could use? I have a few. Uh, all right. I know I use... Uh, this digitizer, a lot of people in this uh, in the chat uses it. Uh, Vitor, Vitor, digitizing, probably the best of the best. All right, probably the most professional uh, digitizer that's out there. Okay, get your stuff quick, and um, probably the best of the best. All right, so Vitor, V I T O R, digitizing. Okay, just pull it up and you it, it'll show up. All right. Uh, Let's see, Joel, uh, so the end, the fender is behind to get the overlap. Descender, I mean. Yeah, I think so. Hold on. All right, Barb, thank you. Uh, Rob, Victor digitizing, okay. Classic digitizing have worked well for me. Ignition drawing is also good. Everyone will have their own prep. Yep. So you, of course, you could always try, right, different digitizers because you're going to get different results, okay? Uh, so these are good recommendations from Barb. I've used uh, Vitor, okay? I've gone through my share of headaches with uh, digitizers, all right? And then once I found Vitor, it was like pretty much game over after that. All right. All right, all right, all right. All right, William, just got my Mighty Hoop starter kit. All right, congratulations. Okay. Just a reminder to everybody. I'm pretty sure everybody knows. But you can get free shipping if you call and you use uh, Romero Threads. If you call and you say Romero Threads as a promo code, you get free shipping. Okay. So pretty good deal right there. Also, when you call, uh, they can answer any of your questions. So if, you, if you're if you like iffy, if, if a certain Mighty Hoop fix, fits your machine, you can always call and just confirm. All right. Let's continue. Right here. All right. Um, so just real quick to to kind of answer the question on the end. This part's on the bottom. Then this part's on top of this. And then this part's the final one. All right. So it goes in that order. All right. Let's go ahead and let's finish this here. Uh, I'm using the complex turning. OK. So there's different ways to create your uh, your shapes. Uh, see all right and then pull up okay then it's gonna ask angle point so here right instead of just coming in here perpendicular i want to put a little slight angle okay notice i'm coming in as at an angle that's just to help That's just to kind of gradually, right, come in at a at a slight angle, just so it doesn't come in too perpendicular. 
All right. Of course, at the very end, I'll, I'll fix up the, the order of this. But of course, that's going underneath. All right. Um, let me see. Uh, then we continue here. Let me see what time. OK, we're one hour in. Let me go ahead. OK, so I would have continued doing this. Let me go ahead and show you how I went about digitizing it. OK, so we'll kind of speed it up here. And this is what we just did right now, OK? But let me delete the hide. All right, so we have the N on the top, OK? Well, of course, we first start, hide this. We start, right, with the global underlay. Okay, this is this is pretty much with all the designs, kind of like if you have uh, different objects kind of intersecting all together, you want to first make that global underlay just to give it all a common base. Okay, a common base that everybody's going to share and you create this global underlay. All right, and then unhide. All right, this one here. Okay, notice uh, the angles that as you see here, we're going to run perpendicular with this one. OK, so let me pull that up. Unhide. Uh, not this one. This one here. OK, so notice here, OK, this is what I'm talking about when we're running, right? One, one's coming from one way and another one. So you at least want to add. A slight angle here, H. So I'm putting a, you know, it's so subtle. Okay, it's so subtle. But it's kind of like going at a specific angle here. All right. So it's not crashing in completely straight on. All right. And then same thing here. We unhide this. Okay, same thing here. Okay, we want to kind of give it a subtle entrance there. All right, and then the, let me unhide everything, unhide all. All right, so let me replay this so you kind of see it. So this this form number the second way. All right, the sec the second way to um, To embroider a logo is to break it up in pieces. All right, so that what number number two is right here. All right, so this is uh, with a fill stitch. All right, let me speed it up a bit. All right, now we now now here we don't have any overlaps right yet, right? With the C, with the C, we don't have any overlaps, and now this is where our overlaps are going to start. Okay, so this is where you want your angles to kind of blend in. Okay, kind of want them to blend in, just to avoid any uh, unnecessary gaps. All right, so I am going to put this file up for download so you could uh, analyze, all right? So you could analyze and see what I'm talking about, all right? Because I know I know it's uh, it's kind of hard to show it here. But if you pull it up and you see kind of like how the blending is happening. Okay. And then the, the outer, the outer uh, satin is the same satin from the previous example, right? So that one we just copied and pasted from the previous example, all right? So this here was step number two, how to create a uh, logo is break it up into pieces, okay? Break it up into pieces. And so this is the first way we did it, which is flat, okay? No dimensions, but 
It still looks nice, all right? It still looks nice. I'm not going to say it doesn't. Sometimes you want it to be flat. You want it to be very clean and subtle, okay? Sometimes it's not necessary to, uh, to cut this up, okay? So if you need something very simple, something easy, all right? You always want to start, when you're starting digitizing, you always want to start like this, just something flat, just to kind of give you an idea, okay? And then sometimes you want to cut, cut up your pieces, Okay, you want to cut up your pieces, such as this one here. All right, it gives it uh, it gives it a little dimensions. All right, all right, let's go to way number three, or how to digitize a logo number three. Okay, so earlier I said that um, this one was too big to uh, this design was too large to uh, to put it as a sand stitch, okay? It was too large. So let's go ahead, let me copy, copy, and let's make a new one, new design, paste, okay? Let's adjust it so it could be uh, sand stitch ready, okay? Uh, let me make a box. Well, let me make that circle again, kind of like how I showed you how to know if your if your sand stitch will fit. Okay, I'm gonna put seven millimeters. All right, seven millimeters. So we want our design to kind of fit in that area right here, right? So what we're gonna do? I'm just gonna shrink it down a bit. All right, and almost there. All right, bam, right here, right? This is this is a seven millimeter circle, so all sides should fit seven millimeters. All right, so seven millimeters is like a, a friendly, like, a good size to do sand of course you could go bigger all right um but sometimes uh it might it might create a a lot of loose loose stitches all right if you have too many long stitches all right so we look good all right uh let's see what's the exact size here let me make a box just to verify the exact size mm -hmm. And this is how you could just get the quick, easy way to get the size of it. All right, we're looking at 1.97. All right, so just see. All right, 1.79. We could go a little bigger. Okay, let me see. Oh my, 2.2. Let, let's put it 2.2 as a width. The sample that I have is a 2.2. All right, so we could actually go this big, make this a little bigger. All right, bam. All right, bam, bam. Uh, All right, all right, let's go ahead, let's do this. Uh, the most, I would say the most, uh, the nice, not the nicest, yeah, an easy way to say it is the, the. of course, sand stitches are very nice stitches, okay? Especially when they're laid out, okay? In a very nice, uh, in a nice way, okay? They just stand out, they're more bold, okay? So that's the word that I'm saying more bold. Let's digitize this in a more in a in a more bold way banner. Okay. Um uh, let's draw. So let, let me show you a um, let me pull up the camera right here and to the drawing board. Um uh, I got a picture right here.
All right, let's check this out. Focus on this. All right, bam, perfect. All right, now, so we're gonna do the same thing as what we just did. We broke it up into pieces uh, because when we're working with sand, of course, we gotta work with with pieces. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna kind of go the same order with this part of the end. Okay, being on top, this part being on the bottom. All right, let's talk about this part here. All right. So what we want now, we want our stitches. Okay, because our stitches are going to now run right in sand stitches form. All the way up line. Okay. So when we're talking about sand stitches, this is what we're talking about here. All right. Usually you want these seven millimeters. Usually you don't want them to be seven millimeters. Can you go bigger? Yeah, you could go probably all the way to 10. Okay, 11 maybe. Probably it might be unnecessary, right? Because they might become loose. Uh, you got to make a lot of adjustments. It's, it's pretty good if you're doing foam. Then yeah, these real thick, uh, these real long uh, stitches. Okay, might look nice. Okay, now what we want to take into account, same thing, right? We want that underlay. Okay, you want these stitches here to kind of intermingle right here, right? You don't want, you don't, you want to stay away from perpendicular. When I'm talking about perpendicular is these stitches, right? These stitches want to run like this, want to run right inside here while these stitches are running that way. So this is perpendicular where one stitch is running up one stitch is running straight into it okay we want to avoid that a uh, way to avoid that is slightly okay slightly angle at a certain angle okay it's not 100 percent coming in good but uh, you at least minimize the 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 90 degree perpendicular crash that potentially could happen all right so just an fyi all right, so uh, the way we're going to do it, just stitch it out. This will be number one. We're going to do this part first. This here is a run or a walk stitch or a run stitch. Okay, one, two, it's going to walk over here. Three, it's going to walk over here. Four, four, come over here. Five. Right, actually, uh, yeah, five. Then it's gonna do this part of the leg, six, run this part, seven, and then this last part, eight. Okay, that'll be the order, the stitching order here. All right, but before it even runs these top ones, it's gonna run now our border, okay, our border that's down below. We're gonna run that first, okay, so that, that runs first, border. First, and we're gonna make that a 3.5 millimeter. Okay, so in the in the earlier example, we had a two millimeter. Okay, this time since we're working with sand stitches, we want to give a little bit more uh, leeway. Okay, so we're gonna our our border is gonna be a little bigger. Okay, so three millimeters. Okay, and then yeah, all right. So kind of like the same thing. All right. All right. Uh. So real quick, I know I haven't been looking here. All right, looks like we're good. Thank you, Barb, for taking care of a lot of pictures. I see a lot of thank yous. Uh, uh, yeah, Rob Jones, Victor is uh, located in Brazil. V-I-T, it's, it's not Victor, it's V-I-T-O-R. Yeah, Victor. All right, uh, where can I file, where can I, uh, good question here. Where, where can we download the file later? I'll put it here on the description. You can just pull it up right there. All right. Um, all right. So, yeah. So, this is very important to bring up, right, Rob? All right. Rob tried uh, Fiverr. Okay. Uh, really? 
you want to stay away from Fiverr. All right. Worst case scenario, uh, I don't know. I've never used Fiverr. Okay. But I've only heard nothing but horror story unless you literally know somebody with that's real good there. But you want to stay away from Fiverr. Just go to Vitor and then you're pretty much good after that. All right. Yeah. Thread breaks. All right. All right. Um, and. Okay, looks like we're good. Let's go ahead. Let's knock out this one. Okay, this is the, the main one here. This one here is our sand stitches, all right? This is probably the more bold, the more uh, perceived value, I would say. It looks nicer, okay? So we're going to just run with our column stitch. All right, different ways to do it, but let's just start here. And it's all tracing, right? That's like uh 80% of digitizing okay you're just tracing all right that's all what it really is all right oh then remember if you if you if you kind of made a minor mistake you could go back and adjust it okay make that let's see all right. all right so this is how a sand stitch looks right so it looks i think it just looks a whole lot nicer way nicer okay so if we measure that m we are looking at hold on let's put this in metric All right, we're a little above seven. Okay, so you could always adjust it. Um, let's see, bam. Okay, so we look good. This is gonna be the top portion, all right? So at the, I like to go from backwards um, just because whatever's underneath kind of has to adjust to what's gonna be on top. All right, kind of makes sense, but all right, and then I'm gonna use this one here so we can do the end real quick. All right, I'm just gonna trace it real quick. This one here is just like a straight, straight shot. Then angle. Okay, we want the angle to kind of follow that bottom. Then we want this to look nice and straight. Okay, then we want that nice blend here. Okay, bam. And quickly, it's gonna take form very quickly. All right. So as you see, okay, it's already looking nice and clean. All right, uh, I think uh, sand stitches, especially for hats, okay? Looks very nice on uh, hats. Um, it's just the only thing to kind of take into consideration is if you're doing, um, if you're doing sand stitches, is just to kind of be mindful of the size you're working with. If it's too big, you're just gonna have to make it a little tad bit smaller, okay? Uh, that's what we did in this situation. All right, our design was uh, too big for sand stitches. Okay, it's not the end of the world. It just means we gotta make some adjustments. All right, and then make this a curve, 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 sharp, enter, 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 angle. Want our angle right here. Right, and then this goes right below here. All right, cool. And then just real quick, okay, I just wanna show you something real quick. Okay, right now it's showing three trims. All right, so very important when you're looking at trims, easy way to remove all these trims just so they could connect is just 
uh, make this a apply close to joint, all right? And bam, we only have one trim, all right? So for the end part, this part's going first, H. Okay, you can control where you want it to start. Okay, you could always control it. So if you're coming from this part, if you want to start it here, right? And then this part, H, where do you want to end it? Right, if you want to end it up here, okay? So just give it a little replay, just the H part. All right, actually, it's doing a, the underlay. Uh, underlay, zigzag, okay? Uh, I would do a, uh, by segment, uh, double zigzag, okay? Double zigzag, bam. Okay. All right, so of course, underlay, just to give it some nice base down below. Okay, since we have apply closest joint, it's gonna do this top part first, then it's gonna come down, do the second part, just so it could connect to the, the, the middle part, the diagonal part of the end. All right, and then we have good coverage there. We have a, a, a good amount of uh, overlap right there. Okay, so they kind of they kind of uh, coming in the same direction from the overlap. Okay, and then this guy kind of tapers his way in. Now he starts from the top to the bottom, and now he's gonna go into the the left side of the leg. All right, and then he kind of gradually, right? He's gonna gradually come in and connect to the diagonal part. All right, so that's kind of like the end. All right, uh, I definitely want to get into the, the embroidery part, okay? So let me just kind of show you 30 to uh, 30. All right, after we go ahead and we digitize, okay, our shapes, just real quick, let me just show you our angles here. Okay, so we're doing the angle and then we're doing a slight curve in. All right, so instead of just staying at one angle all the way through at the very end, all right, so sometimes you, you'll you see these angles kind of kind of change just to give it a little bit more uh, subtle transition into whatever it's connecting. All right, so let's see H here. So same thing here, little subtle angles here. And then H, same thing here. So just to kind of save with time here, H, just showing you the angles that we went with. This one here is probably the, the one that is kind of difficult to make a smooth transition, okay? Because you're coming in perpendicular right here, all right? So as you see, we got a little slight angle here, all right? And then here, H, okay, we got a little angle. All right, just little minor things to take to to think about. Like if you're getting gaps in your in your designs, and you want to know why you're getting gaps, most likely, uh, most likely, uh, something is coming in perpendicular and it's pulling the threads in. Okay. All right. Let me see. Bam. Let's run a replay on this one. Let me let me run a replay. Um. So we have our global underlay. We have our global underlay coming down here. This is just to tie our whole design together, right? And now it's gonna do the border, okay? So on the sand stitch, you want the border to be below the actual sand stitch, okay? So let me speed it up a bit. All right, so now we're our border is a little bigger, 3.5 millimeters. Uh, on the previous example, we had two millimeter border, pretty small. Okay, since since we're doing a sand, it requires a little bit more uh, border. Okay, here I just kind of making our corners look a little nice. Okay, now it's, it's just doing the inside borders. All right, let me see. Bam. So it's going to do these borders, the inside holes. Okay, and now it completes the, the outside border. Now it's about to do the actual stitching part. So it'll start there. 
Okay. So the this sand stitch, this part, it's all done in one with zero cuts. Okay. There's no cuts till the fine till the end. Okay, so it's doing the C part first because the N is on top of the C. Okay. I know for North Carolina, uh, they have the logos like different ways, like different. Right. But I have a hat and it, it matches it. It matches this this way here. All right. So kind of same way we kind of designed it. Bam. And bam. All right. All right. So let's go ahead. Let's let's embroider this. All right. Let's do an actual embroider so we can see how it actually looks like. All right. Um, all right. Thank you, Crafty Puerto Rican. Everybody hit the like button. Yep. Let's remind you two that we are in the house today. We are learning. All right. We're about to start uh, embroidering these three pieces. All right. All right. Let me see. Um, all right. Remember, if you have a question, okay, if you have any questions, uh, leave them down below with a Q. All right. Let me prepare. Let's prepare our camera so we can do the hooping and the embroidery part. All right. That's always the fun part. All right. Let me warm up this. Let me turn on the embroidery machine. Let's set up the GoPro. Might have to add some lights down here. All right, so a lot of times, right? Uh, the most important thing about the digitizing part, because you could practice all day, but if you don't actually stitch out what you practice, okay, you're not really gonna learn much from it. Okay, so I know from my experience. Um, I learned the most when I actually kind of look over my designs and you could catch, you can catch like little minor, you can catch like little minor details that you didn't think about in the digitizing part. All right. All right. Let me set, let me get set up right here. Oh. All right, hold on. Let me let me get this camera ready. Give me one sec. We just uh All right. So, what we're going to do, we're going to uh embroider the three designs that we went over okay we're going to do the flat we're going to do the the more uh detailed flat and then the the sand stitch all right so that way you could see the difference okay all right let's see if we're good It's a little dark right here, so I'll we'll throw a light real quick. All right. Just give me one second to kind of prep. All right, looks like we're good. We should be all right.
I'm gonna show you why I like this hoop right here to uh, to run samples. I like doing uh, I like digitizing logos. I think logos is really uh, uh, it's very low stitch count, right? Your two inches, three inch logos, okay? But they're perfect for polo shirts. They're perfect for beanies and uh, hats, okay? So I like to do them. So this one fits, okay? The, the reason why I like to do these, because if, let's say I do a sample of, hold on. Let's say I do an example of like uh, four different uh, logos, okay? I could stack them up here, okay? So you'll see right now how I do it. All right, so for my example, I'm gonna use this Gildan sweater. All right, so instead of just using your traditional twill, I have just a bunch of like garments that that was either, um, that either something happened to it or uh, I just saving it as a, for a sample, okay? So I get the sleeve here, okay? I definitely don't like to waste any of my garments. Okay. And the reason why I like to use sweaters is because I want to make sure if this, uh, if I, uh, if I actually, if I do an actual uh, stitch out, okay, it'll, it'll be fr uh, sweater friendly. Okay. So whatever you're embroidering on, you always want to sample on that piece of garment. Okay. So I'm just going to use this. And what you, what you don't want to do when you're cutting your fabric, I just have these all-purpose. These are like the Home Depot uh, scissors. This will cut through like boxes. It just cuts through anything. Like it doesn't really care. So I just use that for all-purpose. All right. So I want to use this as, a, as my sample. All of course, cutaway. Okay, cutaway, very important. Uh, even even for your practice stitch out, you want to use proper uh, cutaway because you don't know you don't know if you need to make any adjustments if your if your stabilizer wasn't done right. All right, so of course I can't find my uh, my cutter. Give me one sec. I just had it. All right, got it right. All right. Um, okay. Just cutting out. I'm going to use two pieces of stabilizer because that's what I use when I use them. Um, actually, I could have gone with one. Really, when I do sweaters, I do one cutaway, but just to uh, just to get a firm base. Mm. All right. All right. So I got the the freestyle right here. All right. Just put my. My backing right here. Is that 3.5 cutaway? This is uh, three, three ounce, not 3.5. All right, good question. All right, and I want this part to come in. All right, and see, of course, you always want it to be nice and flat right here. All right. You want this 
And this is really just simulating a sweater, right? So that way, when you're doing your uh, practice, you know if it's production ready. All right, let's go ahead. Let's transition. Let me see if my wire goes all the way over here. All right, looks like we're good. And hold on, let me just verify that the bobbin's good. All right, bobbin is super packed right here. These are the magnetic bobbins. All right, it looks like um, a lot of the vendors, they're starting to get uh, the magnetic bobbin in stock. Okay, so I know all, all stitch just sent out an email that they have it in stock. Okay. I'll put the link down to all stitch too. Um, bam, actually, yeah, should be good. All right, let me put a little bit more slack right here. All right, let me see if I can get a, I think we got a good angle. Yep, good angle. All right, uh, let's see. Which one do we do first? Bam. Let's do the normal flat one first. Okay, so that was. Okay. Um, let me just make sure my colors are good. Remember, if you have any questions, uh, just put a cue because once we do all that, we could uh, answer some questions. All right, this is 32. It'll be a um, fill stitch, then. So it's seven, eight, eight, then 11. Eight, then 11. All right. Uh, of course, we're going to trace it. Oh. Hold on. And put the right hoop. We got to put a uh, hoop F. So if you have a Racoma. I use hoop F with this uh, with this hoop. So anytime I change a hoop, I want to take a, take this off before crazy stuff happens. Uh, F. All right, now uh, escape. All right, looks like we're good. And bam, bam. Uh, eight. Just want to verify the color. Eight in eleven. All right. Let's see. All right, we got a good angle right there. All right, so we'll let it run right now. Uh, just let me know if we have any questions. Let me see. I can see it. Yeah, so it's being ran right there. All right, we got a good view right there. Uh, all right, Jaylene, appreciate that. We got my brother, Mix, straight out of California, Van Ice. All right. Marisa, looks like 3D. Yeah, sand stitches, definitely looks 3D. 
it gives it that extra it gives it you know that boldness into it all right let me let me start all the way to the top i, w I haven't been looking at the chat so um let me see we got a lot of good mornings this morning all right uh good morning craftable things good morning damps okay uh Good morning, Eddie, Rob, Pablo. Okay. Uh, all right, let's see. Bam, bam. Good. I guess. Uh, right now, it's doing. So, if we're looking at the design, it's doing that. Um, that underlay. I mean, not the underlay. The fill stitch. So. The fill stitch, the one angle fill stitch, right? So the one that we did in the beginning, All right? Um, all right, Damien from the UK, okay? So from the other side of the pond, thanks again for all your help and advice. Appreciate that. Uh, and then uh, Barb, yep, we are all in this together. All right, we are all learning, right? We're all learning. Um, no matter what, like each time a project comes in, okay, for some reason, customers want to throw uh, new ideas and new ideas usually make you have to come up with new uh, new techniques that you got to do. All right. All right. Uh, all right, Barb. Uh, great demonstration on the over and unders at such great. Yeah. So over and unders. We we talked about that uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, right? Right with the with the gaps, okay? Gaps, you cannot run away from gaps, all right? They're gonna show up, and you got to make sure you you're always overcompensating for that. Uh, all right, uh, Marisa, uh, happy Saturday here early, California. A lot of great information. Yeah, good information. All right, uh, HTAH family. Can't believe I made a part of my life. My husband also enjoys watching like that. We just got our machine, so want to learn digitize. Yep. So the best thing to do with digitizing, just make personal projects. And um, what I what I like to do, I like to find um, items that like my favorite items that I like to buy. I like to make. I like to see if I could match it and then eventually you're gonna match it and then can you make it better or do you have other ways to uh design it all right so as you've seen today we 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 digitized it three different ways so there's never one way to digitize something so you can always uh, change stuff around you can always make it as basic so right now we're doing the basic we're doing the basic uh design this is just a all flat design all right all right, Bevy Jean, I have to agree about the importance of the stitch out because you took the time to teach and show it. I feel I was able to improve my outcome from watching you. I realized how it should look. All right, yeah, yeah. So um, I I honestly think that if you only know the theory, okay, because I think it's easy to understand theory, all right, because it's it's all in a book and it's all like a recipe, right? Everybody's looking for that recipe for success in digitizing. You might know the rules, but a lot of times the rules, they got to be broken or they kind of like disappoint us because you think something should work and it doesn't work. And it's because different fabric wants to act different ways. All right. So different fabric, different situation. All right. Um, so one file might work for a hat. It might work for a jean jacket, but then you put it on a polo shirt, right? On a Nike, real, real thin polo shirt. Now it doesn't work. And then you wonder why. Okay, so definitely got to see the stitch up. All right, uh, Crafty Puerto Rican, what are the different elements between digitizing this logo for a cap instead of a flat? Um. That's a good question, right? That's a good question. Really, 
when when I digitize, I I'm just I naturally by default I like to start from the center out. Okay, so uh, when we when we laid down the the global underlay, we kind of like flanned stuff out. Um, we gave it a dimension. I would say this these um, these files potentially can work on a hat. Okay, uh, I would have to try it out. Actually, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try it out today. Right after this, I'm gonna put it on a hat. It should work on a hat. But mo, mo, uh, of course, we, we know the rules, right? You got to start from the bottom, bottom up, center out. Okay, That's just so you could push the fabric, right? And it could lay flat. That's really the thing. Um, but usually, if something is kind of starting from the sides and working its way in, it might not work for a hat. Okay, So let me see. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's the different elements. Is, um, you wanna you wanna push the fabric out, and then do your design on top, which we kind of did with our global underlay. All right. All right. Uh, all right, Jaylene, you are so good at explaining. I didn't know that the random stitch where I personally my design removed. Now I know global underlay. Thanks for all your, yeah yeah global underlay. It makes a a, a big difference. All right. Uh, all right, that's perfect right there. Um, I know it's, I, I think it shows a little bright on your side. Hold on. Hold on. Let me give you a better view. Let me get my other uh, my other camera stand. Hold on, give me one sec while I adjust the camera. Because it's looking a little bright there, but I want to show you how the registration is lining up. I think it's better like that. Oh yeah, yeah. You, we got a good view now. Yeah, perfect view. All right. Uh, let's go back here. All right, Bevy. When I was finished, I kept tweaking my beanie, so I, so I was proud of how crisp the letters came out. Yep. Yep. It's like the best feeling when everything looks nice and clean, nice and sharp. Because text, that's really make or break. Like, you'll know, you know if your text came out good. Like, you cannot lie to yourself. Uh, you know, we all know how letters should look. Yeah, that's looking sharp. All right. Yep, all right. Uh, all right, Barb. Uh, I always do a test stitch out whether I bought the design, digitized myself, or had it. 
yeah, that's automatic. You have to you have to do a stitch out. And I'll tell you something. Even like, uh, even when um, even when I receive files, like you don't know what your digitize if your digitizer did a stitch out. You don't know what he stitched it out on. So most likely, I know in my case, no matter what, there's always like little small things that kind of I kind of find, and I'll just make a a, a quick change. So good. It's always good idea to uh, to find a digitizer that has that software that you have. That way, if you need to make an adjustment, all right, it's no biggie. You go ahead and you make that change. All right. Um, all right. Appreciate that, Beverly. Great information today. Yep. So right now, what we're doing, we're doing the actual stitch out. Okay. So today we learned kind of like the the digitizing part. Okay. We got into we got into some basic stuff. We kind of talked about more complicated stuff that kind of uh, is not the it's not the easiest thing to grasp. Okay, especially when you have objects that are combining. Okay, um, a lot of this stuff is stuff that a lot of this stuff is stuff that um, we kind of learn with experience. All right, good stuff. Um, let me see. Wood, no show poly mesh cutaway B record. I don't think it's necessary. No show poly mesh. You could, but it's not that thin. All right. This is kind of like real thin here. Right. All right. Let's check this. Let's check this guy out. All right. So this was our example number one. All right. I just got one little. A little straggler right here. Let's see if I can get you a good view. All right, that's a good view right there. All right, well let's let's do our next one, the one with a little bit more dimension. All right, let's pull that one out. Um, That is 32, 31. And this one, 811, 811. All right, sounds good. Let's trace this. Oh, it's probably too high. All right, looks like we're good. Uh, let me just verify the colors. Eight, eight, eleven, escape. Okay, one more trace, just in case, right? All right. It's gonna do that uh, global underlay first. Okay. Uh, where you get that backing from? Uh, all stitch. I use all stitch for my stuff. I'll put it in the. I gotta update the description on this file. Alright. I have a link to uh, all stitch. I'll put it right when we're done. All right. Good morning, Ace Boogie. A bit late, but now I'm here. Yep. So you came for the fun part, right? For the actual stitch out. So we did three designs. We digitized three designs. Uh, the very easy way, okay. The more uh, a little bit more detailed way, the second way, and then the the third one, the sand stitch way, which is the more um, more bold, right? 
uh, the more perceived value, I would say. Okay, so you're here, good. Remember, uh, the videos are available on the on the replay. All right, so if you make it here, or sometimes it's just good practice to see the live, right? And then go back and kind of see it again, like practice. I'm gonna put these files up for free download so you could, you could um, analyze them, okay? You could break them down, you could, you can ask all the whys. Remember, if you have any questions, you can only you could always drop the question here in the comments. And then I'm usually tracking the it's probably easier to ask a question through the comments and it's easier for me to answer them like that. All right. All right. Um let me see. Uh all right. Good morning, Nick Blummer from North Dakota. All right. All right, we got Pablo from Germany. All right, from the other side. All right. And then, uh, yeah, yeah, if you got to rewatch, if you got to rewatch the, the episode, okay, uh, it's usually good practice. Like, I, I wouldn't say you're going to grasp everything in one watch, okay? It's all about repetition, like, like any skill, right? Any skill in life. If you want to learn something, you got to do something over and over and over and over, right? That's how we that's how we create muscles, right? Is doing stuff over and over and over and over and over. Same thing here, we got to watch this over and over and over and over, and kind of uh, catch the things that we missed, right? So yeah, it's always available. Okay. All right, Damien, I have Chroma Lux. What do you think about their audio their auto digitizing function? All right. Uh, I haven't, I have, I have, um, I have Chroma, but I have the basic one. Okay. Um, I haven't really got into Chroma. Okay. Uh, I need to sit down and kind of learn the way they do it or the, learn the way the software is, um, kind of organized. All right. But what I would say just overall, auto digitizing, all right, I would never recommend it. Okay. Um, I think it's just a feature. It's a selling feature, right? Because one software has it. That means every other software has to have it. Because if you really don't know, or if you're selling a software to somebody that doesn't know much about digitizing, auto digitizing sounds like a fantastic feature. Okay. Sounds like a fantastic feature until you use it. All right. Uh, you might get lucky, right? You might get a 20% luck and actually get a good design out of auto digitizing. But for the most part, okay, auto digitizing, I would say just as a general, this is not on a specific software, just auto digitizing every, every software, okay, every software as a whole. I wouldn't recommend it and it's not there yet, okay? It's not there yet. Like you need a, human eyes to analyze actual designs breakdowns uh kind of understand what's overlap what's supposed to be overlap what's not supposed to be overlap okay that's something that auto digitizing doesn't take into account all right so uh i would say skip skip the auto digitizing okay i know it's there right it's so convenient a uh, uh, click of a button but it, it, you're gonna get more it's going to take more time fixing the auto digitizing than just manually click doing your clicks, right? Especially if you have Lux. If you have Lux, you should have a lot of the features that mostly all digitizing softwares have, all right? So make sure you use all the features that the Lux has. All right. All right. Appreciate that, uh, Crafty Puerto Rican. Thank you. All right. Um, H T A H Hata family Hamilton. Thanks for I was watching you the other night. Came by home and I went to do some stitch out and I turned off YouTube. Henry said I wait. I was watching. Oh, all right. Yeah, yeah. Appreciate that. Uh, I only have Chroma Inspire. Okay, that's what I have. I so with my second machine, I got um Chroma Inspire. With my first machine, 
when I bought my first machine, I got a Wilcom Deco design. So it's like the most basic Wilcom, right? With no with no features, right? The most basic stuff. And um, that's how I came about getting into the whole Wilcom, right? Then I went Wilcom Hatch and Wilcom 4.5. But what I want to do, I might challenge myself, right? I might challenge myself and spend like one week locked in, locked in my house learning Chrome Inspire and seeing how far or what's what's the maximum I can do with, with Chrome Inspire, all right? Like how far can I go with digitizing for Chrome Inspire, right? It's just a matter of me sitting down and doing it, all right? But it's just so, it, it's, we already know embroidery is just so time consuming, right? That we have so many plans and it's kind of hard to get, get to these, uh, little projects that we have all right all right and then barb said damien i never use auto i usually have to fix too many issues and it's faster for me to all right so we're pretty much saying the same thing right here right usually you're better off just manually stitching them because if you auto digitize now you got to fix all the crazy stuff that the software did all right uh um, all right. Good morning, Lisa. When we purchased our baby lock 10 needle, our store sold us pallet 11. Is this a decent? Uh, uh, I don't think I ever heard of pallet 11. I don't know if anybody has any experience with pallet 11. Um, so I don't know. I don't know. That's probably a good question. Let me write that down. Palette 11. I'll see what features they have. Palette 11. All right. Thank you for the question. All right. Um, and then, Joe, I get my practice garments from half price tags at Goodwill stores, jean jackets, to sports shirts, gloves, very, they have a good mix of selections to choose from. Yup, yup. All right. Excellent, excellent uh, comment right here, right? The thrift stores, okay? I'm actually working on a video, all right? I, it's like long time in the making, but it's so crazy stuff happening. But I have a video where I'm going to a Goodwill, okay? And there are specific items that I'm getting at the Goodwill, okay? Perfect for sampling items, all right? So, yes, thank you for mentioning that. Uh, you definitely get good prices. Uh, you get brands, well-known brands, okay? Well-known brands. Uh, I know we get a lot of orders for uh, Nike and Adidas, so I like to I like to buy from the Goodwill, different different material mix with Nike and, and Adidas, uh, because stuff stuff likes to act different, right? Especially thin, right? Very thin polos, okay? Um, but once you understand how thin polos work. Okay, you pretty much got it. Okay, you pretty much got it after that. All right. All right. Good morning, Rye Beats. How's it going? Okay. So that's, uh, he's on West Coast time. All right. California. All right. Joe Abel, PE Design, his brother, PE Pilot 11, baby, Brad, Brent, Brad, Brad. All right. And then, um, thank you. I'm hoping Pilot 11 is good to start with. Just found you. All right. Uh, Hold on. I'm going to mention this. Let me just push start. But from the look of it, all right, from the look of it, so you see the dimensions. All right. You can see that C is now separated with the N. Okay. So now we have a little bit more uh, dimension to it. All right. All right. We're going to talk about this right here, right? Because you said, uh, is it, is it, uh, this is what they gave you, right? This is the digitizing software that they gave you. We'll talk about this right now. All right. It's a good, uh, good discussion point right now. So right now, when I'm what I'm just looking right now, I just want to see how this running stitch, how well did it do outlining my border, and it's right on the money. Okay, right on the money. Once I know it, it outlined it good, then everything else is gonna work out pretty good. All right, 
let me pull up this question right here, all right? Because this is, I just thought about this right now. All right. Thank you. I'm hoping, pa so Palette 11 is the software, right, that was given to Lisa from the company, right? So when you buy an embroidery machine, all right, so this is for a lot of people that, that, that are buying machines and um, or in the market for buying machines, right? When you buy a machine, most likely the the, the embroidery company they're gonna sell, they're gonna give you, okay? They're gonna market, hey, if you buy this machine, you get this free software, okay? Sounds good, right? Because you want to design software, right? Uh, now, anything that's free, right? It's already we already know, right? Everything that's free. Um, there's usually an asterisk next to it, right? One thing about any free software, you're not gonna get the best of the best software, right? You're gonna get the, the you're gonna get the the introductory uh, software, like it's an introduction. It's like a uh, they're gonna open the front door and they're gonna let you in the living room, all right? Just to give you uh just to kind of give you an overview of what you can buy, right? They're not gonna sell you the rooms and the bathroom and the upstairs and the downstairs, right? You can only kind of hang out in the living room. Okay. That's that that that's kind of like what you're gonna get any any company, all right? This is any company. Your introductory software, anything that's free, you're gonna get an introductory uh digitizing. Okay. So eventually if it's probably good enough for you to open your, your files and review your files. Okay, nothing to do major heavy lifting. Okay, so maybe you can maybe do uh, lettering. Okay, maybe do lettering with limited amount of fonts. Okay, but if if it's if design is something you want to get serious into, then now you got to get into right. You got to go to the next level of whatever software they sell. Okay, so they always have three three different levels of software. They have the introductory, which is the free one, the mid range which usually costs about a grand. And then you have your uh, your expert pro level, right? Which is usually in the thousands, right? That's just the way it works, all right? Uh, good, good, good information, good question, okay? But to answer your question, most likely, if it was given, if it was given part of a package, most likely it's an introductory price. It's good enough to open files, make minor, Text adjustments, make minor adjustments, okay? But nothing too crazy, okay? All right, just like Joe right here, they have different tiers too, right? Everything is on tiers, okay? Everything is on tiers. It's like, hey, start with this, okay? But then you see that all the nice bells and whistles, they're not available, all right? That's just the way it is. All right, and then uh, Jaylene, Wilcom Hatch 2 sold online. Is Wilcom proper? That is a step below the commercial version. Available online. Yep. So Hatch is really where I learn how to digitize. Okay. I learn how to digitize with Hatch. Everything I do with my Wilcom uh, 4.5, I a lot of it I can do with Hatch. Okay. So if you want to get serious about digitizing, I would recommend uh, Hatch because Hatch you can do payments. Okay. I, I think I was paying a hundred bucks a month. Um, up and then it was like eleven. It was like a grand or eleven hundred bucks. All right, all right. Uh, let's look at our uh, our file real quick. All right, there's a good angle right here uh, at our file. So as you see, we now have dimension on our file. Right, instead of it being one flat object, we now have dimension. Okay, the only thing, the biggest thing to know about when you're bringing in dimension when you're cutting in pieces the biggest thing you have to take into account is the overlaps okay looking out for uh unnecessary gaps and holes and the way you the way you compensate is by putting uh gaps all right is this one let's do our third one our third one is our sand stitch one all right so this one all right i'm trying to let's see i'm trying to find something bad with it and i can't all right everything looks good all right, let's go to the third one. Let's push this up. All 
All right. 30. 31. All right. Then 11, 8. So it's the bottom and then the top. Yep. Okay. Let's do a quick trace. All right, perfect. Hit start. So it's gonna do the the sand stitch for the the bottom part first. So it's gonna do the the global underlay. Okay, that's just that's just so our um, fabric can connect with our underlay. And notice that I kind of did some churls where you see those like churls, those stars that look like stars. That's really where um, my objects are combining. So I want to make a little bit more churls there. Then now it's starting the, the outer line. All right. Let's talk about something important that I kind of almost forgot about. Right here, so these papers, I got my production sheets. All right. All right. So earlier, where I was telling you like items that you should look out for, okay, such as how much trims, uh, what's your biggest maximum stitch. It's that's all information right here. Okay, so it's good information. Kind of you should be uh, familiar with all the information that's on your production sheet. Okay, sometimes you can catch. Uh, unnecessary items by reading this, all right? But what I want to show you is uh, when we're running tatami stitch versus sand stitches. So right now we're going to do sand stitches, right? We're not running any fill stitches or uh, tatami stitches, okay? That first file that we did, the first file that we did, uh, it was a little bigger, slightly bigger, uh, but it, it, we were looking at 6,600 stitches all right six thousand six hundred fifty nine stitches as soon as we broke it up into pieces okay it went up okay so these two sizes the two first stitches that we did the two sizes were the same all we did on the second one we cut it up okay the first one six thousand six hundred fifty nine stitch and as soon as we cut it up it went up to eight thousand fifty six stitches so that's about 1,500 stitches extra once you start cutting stuff up, all right? So the more details you put in, the more details you put into your fill stitch, uh, your, your stitch count is going to go up, all right? So take that into consideration. If a customer is asking you like, hey, will it, will it look better if we break up our, our design, okay? So yes, it'll look better. It'll take a little bit longer. Let me hide this one. It'll take a little longer, all right? So take into consideration that stuff, all right? Now, we're running a um, sand stitch. So we're running a sand stitch now. And now our stitch count, 4,000. 4,234, all right? So we're literally half. The sand stitch has half of what our second stitch had, which had 8,000. Okay, so when you're running sand stitches, when you're running sand stitches, you're doing uh, less stitches. All right, so I'm just looking at this. Uh, right now, this looks like chaos, okay? It looks like everything is just all over the place, but it's like organized chaos, right? Because we have our underlay we have our underlay uh our global underlay in the bottom and then we're running our um uh, our sand stitches that are going to be down all right let me continue uh, all right good morning hector from compton west coast so we got a lot of a lot of west coast in the house okay california is definitely in the building. 
All right. Um, do you do small digitizing, not letters? Uh, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. There's a, so we're talking about like detailed work. If we're talking about detailed work, uh, definitely do. Maybe uh, I do an example of it. I've done a lot of um, like, I would say like wings, uh, eagles, flags. All right, let me just look at this. Uh, yeah, yeah. All right, everything looks clean. Now, let's put on these big. Now we're putting on the big sand stitches. And then you can kind of feel when the stitches are long because you could hear the machine. You can hear that extra tenth of a second. Boom, boom, boom. Like the rhythm. Like once you get to know your your machine, like you know that rhythm. So it's doing some. All right. So these here are my favorite type of stitches, the sand stitches, because now we're adding boldness. All right. So it's gonna do the C part right now. All right. It's doing I so as an underlay. As an underlay, it has the zigzag stitch. All right. All right let me see. Uh, All right, and then Lisa wrote, uh, they did charge for the one you got. Yeah, so if they charge you for the one you got, then uh, the chances of it being a good one uh, should be a good chance, right? And then um, originally from Connecticut, then Arkansas, now in Mississippi. All right. All right. Um, now it's going to do that in. Remember the order that we're talking about? It's going to do this part of the leg. So it's doing the underlay. Okay. Uh, I want to say the density on this one, on the, on the sand stitches, since I put a good amount of underlay, I put a double zigzag underlay on this. Um, it's at a 40.40 density. Okay. So usually the machine puts it at a 0.36. Okay, uh, since I put a good amount of uh, density, all right, so let me just take a look at this. Yeah, let me get this camera ready. We could put it in, put it on zoom or zoom in. I think the
All right. Uh, I'm just adjusting the camera so we could get a good zoom into our design. Give me one sec. All right. Bam, bam. Actually, let me change cameras. All right. So, looks good. And Let's just change cameras real quick. All right. So I think we have a question right here. Barb, what did the stitching count end up being for? Okay, so that's what I was uh, mentioning was um, the first the first one we did. The first one we did, the tatami fill with no special anything that that was running 6,000 6,000 stitches and then when we broke it up it went up to 8,000 stitches and then this sand stitch the sand stitch it went to uh, 4,000 all right so let's see the final course we all like to see the back of uh, stitching that's one thing we don't see a lot right we don't see a lot from other samples is I like to show the back side so let's use zooming power let me just make sure we're hold on Let me just fix my um, focus. Put this. All right, so it's cool. It's a little tight. All right, but what I want to show you. All right, final product. So this is the first one. Okay, so I haven't even touched it. Right, I went right off the machine. And I haven't even looked at it to clean it. I'm like looking at it real time with everybody else. Okay, let me see. All right. This is the first one we did. This is just a, a fill stitch, not cut up. This was the quick and easy way. Okay, if you wanna do something real quick, you would have done it the first way. Number two, now we broke it up. We broke up our pieces. Okay, it's a little bright. Hold on, let me see if. All right, that's too dark. Okay, there we go. Let's go. All right. So as you can see, it has a little bit more character, right? Because it's broken into pieces. Okay, broken. Trying to let you see in different angles, right? The way the light hits it, it's a little different. Uh, I would say registration wise, okay? We're looking real good on the registration, okay? Then on our satin, See, get you a good angle. See if I can hit different angles. Yep, that's good. Right. So this one, of course, looks very bold. I would say Okay, I would say this one here, the sand stitch. I'm gonna try it out on a hat, okay? But I would wanna say it should work on a hat. But of course, the only way to figure out is to actually stitch it out. All right, so from a distance, that's super close, right? Like I'm literally, the way I was showing it to you right here, that's literally like six inches from the camera. 
All right. Let's see if I can zoom in right here. All right. Let me know what you guys think. Let me see. Let me put them, compare them here. All right. Let me do some last uh, thoughts on this. All right. Let me just wrap up what I think, especially what I'm seeing right now, right? Let's see. I keep it on. Hold on. All right, let's do a little analyze, right? Just like in sports when they analyze the replay. Well, let's analyze this replay right quick. All right, we got everything right. All right, so size-wise, okay, size-wise, you can see the difference between this top, these two. We're looking at a 2.5, two and a half inches wide, two and a half inches wide. This one here, okay, 2.25, okay, so it's just minus a quarter, all right, 2.25, all right. So it's like a little bit of a difference, but when you put them side by side, they look like big difference, right? Um, I do like this third one, okay? Um, especially here, right? Like I'm looking at it in person, like in, in person, it even looks uh, way better in person. It looks good on the video too. This one here looks very clean too, right? Even though it's quick and easy, it's clean, of course, this one. I would say uh, since we have, it's like a lot of pieces on top of pieces. So maybe I would say if you're in a situation like this where there's so many pieces on top of pieces, it might be better just to go flat, okay? Because you have a lot of, you can see a lot of indentations, okay? So anytime we have our, uh, our uh, materials combining, you'll see the light hit it and you can see the indentation, okay? Um, but this one does look clean. I like this first one, this one, and then this one. I'm gonna try this on a hat later. All right, um, let me do some last minute questions. All right, uh, sh all right, Maxine, good morning. Do you have any guidelines when a sand stitch border should be stitched before the fill versus after? Uh, I think like in a situation like this, where we have this third one here, uh, where we have our um, sand stitch, the, the the border sand stitch should be on the bottom, right? It should be on the bottom. Uh, here, it made sense to put the border, the sand stitch on top of the fill stitch. So yeah, good question here, all right? So fill stitch, sand stitch on top of border, um, I mean, border on top of sand, uh, border on top of fill stitch. Here, since we have a sand stitch on top, that's sand stitch on top of border. All right, good question. All right, those are little details that we kind of don't think about, but very important. All right, and then uh, for a ham, would you suggest start with the sand start at the bottom? All right, so I'm thinking for a hat, would you suggest start the sand start at the bottom? Uh, yeah, yeah, you could start from the bottom. We put the global underlay. So it should give you some good uh, leeway. All right. Yeah, that's what you said. Hat. All right. All right. All uh, right. Barb, what did, what? Did, okay. Yeah. So we took care of that question. All right. So once again, this one here, uh, 6,000 stitch, 8,000, 6,500, 8,000, and then 4,000. All right. So you see how the difference between little, uh, little uh, details happens. All right. Oh, wow. The light bulb just went off. I was. I went to ask why did you do the sand border instead of like the other border too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, yeah. So we just talked about that. Cool. Um, yeah, yeah. Big, big decrease. So when you're doing sand stitches, your your stitches will decrease. All right. Very nice. All right. Appreciate that. Life to know. Yeah, the three D effect. It does give it a three D effect, right? The sand stitch. Um. All right. Bam, bam. So everybody, thank you for the. Looks very nice. Did you say density is at 40%? What I said density was at 0 0.4, 0 0.4 millimeters. 
Okay, so each each uh, needle is coming in 0.4 middle millimeters away. So in your in your settings, whenever you go to your sand stitch settings, you'll see the density 0.4. All right, all right. Oh, okay, all right, all right. And then some some of you had like the middle, so you like the middle, then you like this one, right? Okay? And then bevy number three, then number one, yeah. And then they all all right. Appreciate that, Marisa. They all came out great. All right. So today, good training today. All right. Uh, I like. I'm looking at the time now. Okay. I can't believe we we've, we've already been two and a half hours in. Right. Feels just like that. All right. Especially when we're doing embroidery and we're learning and we're having fun and we're actually seeing like real life stitch outs. Right. Because we could have ended this like at hour one uh, at time one hour and we wouldn't have seen the actual stitch out. All right. So this is the actual proof. Okay, so everybody today, I want to challenge you and come up with your uh, personal side projects. Okay, if you want to follow along, do the North Carolina logo. I'm going to put, just give me like a couple hours. Within a couple hours, I'll put the link up. Okay, I just need a guy to get situated right now, uh, get some breakfast and kind of get my morning started. All right, because it's already 1030 right here. All right, but I want to challenge you. I want you to uh uh, digitize, right? So you could do it three different ways. Challenge yourself and try to figure out different ways to, to do, to digitize items or go to like the, go to the mall, see like your favorite, uh, see your favorite team logo and kind of remix it and kind of see like, well, why did they do it like this? What if we, what would it look if we did it like this? Right. And this is all for educational purposes, right? Um, you all want to see, uh, why, right? I usually take pictures of items that I like at the mall, and then I just look at it and kind of figure out the steps and uh, and uh, and the way they actually digitize it. Because you could look at something and you could see the order that they embroidered it in. Okay, and then it just be it just makes you kind of like think a little different outside the box. All right, especially if you're looking at it through a production, because everything in the stores they're all they're all designed with production in mind. OK, so I want to thank everybody for stopping by today. Uh, make sure you hit likes uh, if you have any questions and you're on the replay. Make sure you leave it down here. This is the best way to kind of get your questions answered. And that way we can all kind of share the knowledge all together. All right. So thank you very much. And I'll see you on the next one. All right. Peace out.